So it's December 1st and it's time to open up our advent calendars on it. Okay. So it looks like Day you one. just punch it out. Oh, Ooh. look at that. And then slide the bottle out. And what do we have here? We have a Montepulciano de Abruzzo. Montepulciano de Abruzzo is an Italian red wine made from the Montepulciano wine grape in the Abruzzo region. It's in East Central Italy. Should not be confused with the Vino Noble de Montepulciano, which is a Tuscan wine made from Sangiovese and other grapes. Got that? Oh. <laughs> it's an Italian wine. I got that. It is peppery and spice notes, described as rustic. So here's what it looks like. Mm, wine on my fingers. Mm. It's got a nice sniff. It definitely smells spicy and rustic. What day is it today? Today's December 2nd. December 2nd. So which number do we look for? Number two. two. All right, two. Okay, we're on day three. December 3rd. Of just, our advent calendars. Just got back from Feed My Starving Children. We fed a lot of starving kids. 106 boxes? Clang. We weren't recording that whole time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mm. Great wine. Day number three. We just started Day out number well. Three. It's blinking now, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. What day is it? Day four. Day four. December 4th. December 4th on our advent calendar. Day five. Yeah. Of the ad Fifth. advent calendar. Fifth of December. Fifth. December. Today is my mom's birthday. December, December six. six. Uh, this is a six or a nine. Uh, that looks like a six. Wait a second. Yeah, because this, is, this is a nine. Yeah. It is December seventh. December seventh. And it's now oh, 10 oh nine p.m. And we're gonna do this because we do. Because it's Saturday. So we have time. I just want to go to bed. Mm. Hoping for a red wine. Woo! A Merlot. Oh, Alan, what are you doing over there? You're doing stuff. Eight, 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 eight. The white. Is a white. Make sure we don't have uh, this. Pinot Bianco Famoso from Italy. We're missing a couple days, but we'll catch up. Legato. <laughs> it's a white wine from Italy. Vintage 2018. 80% Pinot Bianco, 20% Famoso. It says, there's a saying in Northern Italy, no meal without wine, no wine without character. Do as the Italians do, cook up a hearty meal, invite your friends, sit down, and raise a glass to this delightful wine. Salut. At, at like 10 o'clock at night, of course. That's what the Italians it's do, isn't it? Don't they eat dinner at like super late? They do. Or is um, that a stereotype? So this tells us absolutely nothing about the wine. How it's gonna taste, <laughs> what it's gonna actually taste you know, like, what we should compare it to. Nothing. It just is says, it a, wait, is it a critter wine? It's got a, a It's got a, like a ramen on the outside of it. Are you sure it's not a pheasant? Cheers. Cheers. Okay, so what do we think about this wine? It doesn't really smell like I, I guess I don't know. I've never had a Pinot Bianco before, so um it's uh, not, it doesn't have like a salinity, like smell or taste to it. Like there's no like salt or sea yeah, water. Yeah, so like, we're not drinking rocks. We're not drinking water from gravel roads. I feel like it tastes a little more like a Pinot Grigio because it just kind of has a little bit like a... Back again. This is our peanut gallery. Yeah, they're watching from not very far away. This was who was helping us earlier today. What's the date today? Um, today is December 11th. 
Which wine are we gonna drink? We are a couple days behind, so <laughs> we are gonna do the one for December 9th. <laughs> Ooh, the 9th of December. It's a Malbec from France. Did you know all Malbecs came from France before they went from Argentina? It was all from the trade routes. That is entirely there. true. That's how they got there. Yep. Uh, and I do know that you are aware of what the old world name for Malbec is in France. Yeah, I can't remember it right now. It is Cahors. Oh, yeah, I knew that. See, I knew you knew that. Let's see if I can get this off without doing the magic trick. Oh, look at that. Don't, All right, so, don't grab very hard and pour. Gotta keep this show on the road. We got a very limited amount of time. This is the same bottle. At, oh, we didn't read what it says, but I'll read it afterwards. It's the same cork as what a lot of the other ones have. Curious to wonder if it's all only Malbec or if it's a, bl uh, a mix of different grapes. <laughs> it says 2018 Malbec, dense and plush. It's a special thing to find a Malbec that can achieve such intensity, dark and deep, full of the classic cherry, pencil lead, and chocolate notes that the Malbec grape is known for. Pencil lead? Is graphite. That what you, is that what you think of when you drink Malbec? Yeah, graphite. Mm, I don't know, this definitely... The thing that I think of when I drink Malbec is actually cherry cola. Because the cherry flavor is so like heavy and sweet, like smelling. Doesn't taste like cherry cola, but the smell definitely gives like a linger of a um, cherry cola syrup. I think of I think of cherries from Washington when, when they go on sale and you go to the grocery store and they're like super cheap and we buy them and eat them like candy. I think they ran through the dishwasher. Shh, don't tell don't anyone tell that we ran our glasses through the dishwasher. <laughs> That's like a big giant no-no. You have anything else you want to say about it? This one probably be way better if we just left it for 30 minutes. Yeah, I mean, it's tasting better now. Buy this variety pack, comes with six wines. Figure out which one you want a case of, buy a case of it, and you'll be good to go. But I don't know if that's going to ever happen. People would probably just keep buying the variety packs because then it would be a crowd pleaser. Yeah. <laughs> and we're live. Oh, buckets. <laughs> All of. Oh my gosh, I still have my hiccups. What day is it today? Mm, today is December 12th, but we are doing the 10th. Because we're two days behind. Do you okay. remember? I do remember that. I just. Rose de España. Rose wine of Spain. This pretty rose is bursting with cherry, strawberry, and watermelon notes, like a weathered matador resting his spurs in midday sun. <laughs> what? <laughs> Each of this, <laughs> reach for this to pair with your siesta. <laughs> Where is this, Spain? Spain. Do they do uh, siestas in Spain? I thought that was just... No, they do. Oh, okay. They sure oh, do. Gosh, hiccups. Whoa. Whoa. Calm down. That's Good a lot. One. That's a lot. <laughs> that is a lot. Oh, fail. Yeah. Fail, fail, fail. Yep. All right. Just so. Don't tell her. Day 12. Right? That's what we're looking for? No. 10. Is it sweet? Is it dry? I don't think it's very sweet. Okay, good. Because, you know, with tasting notes like strawberry and watermelon, I guess I just kind of assume that it's automatically going to be sweet and I don't know. No, I think you might like it more than you think. Yeah, I actually think I like it. I do too. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good. Welcome back to crazy cat people. Who like wine? Oh no, that's like legit, like regular. We do like wine and have cats. Mm -hmm. This is Montgomery. He was just being really mean, so he got picked up. He 
Bye. Eleven. Ooh. A Cabernet. French Cabernet. It's very exciting. Uh, 2018 Cabernet. A classic wine with all of the current plum and coffee notes one expects from Cabernet Sauvignon with an easygoing round finish. An easy to love wine for old world and new world Cabernet fans alike. Don't do that. Brie. We don't have Brie. Oh, it's not gonna be good with our wine at all. It's it hot, is hot, cheese. hot and spicy. Gouda. Oh, do you want me to do that? No. Are you gonna do it today? Today, no. <laughs> I like your technique. <laughs> You like Gotta it? keep those those elbows up. <laughs> we got excited. Yeah, whatever. Does it smell good? What do we think of it? It's a cab. It's a I, French cab. I feel like it's fragile, and that if it stayed open, it would it would fail. You think so? Yeah. It doesn't have a super big nose. No. Definitely smells like cherry and currant and plum. I get like, I taste like cocoa. Like cocoa powder, not chocolate. Like baking cocoa? Yeah, like baking cocoa. Does it I, dry your mouth out? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I agree. I think that this wine is definitely a little fragile. That's not a bad thing, but I thought for a cab that it would be not like that. Yeah, it's a very uh, light vintage, apparently. As in like, oh, like the year. Yeah, like it wasn't a super amazing growing season. Like they probably just had just enough heat and rain and good weather in order to make this. Or this is like third run. So like all of the big heavy backbone and heft from Cab is in the first two better options. I think cheddar cheese would be good. A lightly aged cheddar cheese. Perhaps the one that we had yesterday. Any aged cheddar cheese. Mm -mm. You don't want a super heavy aged cheese with you this one. You think it'll because... cover up the wine? Yeah. Because it's... Yep. California Cabernets have an awful lot of a naturally occurring chemical called pyrazines, which is what gives it this like green bell pepper flavor. French cabs. They have it, but there's something with the soil that makes it taste different. So you don't typically get that heavy green bell pepper flavor off of a French cab. Whereas in like Australia and um, California, their growing regions for some reason give off those particular flavors. And um, so it's another dead giveaway. If you kind of taste like your Drinking a green bell pepper, you're probably drinking from a new world location. And that doesn't mean that it's bad, it's just an identifier. Well, unless you don't like the flavor of it. Well, I mean, if you're a cab drinker, it just kind of comes with the territory. All cab, all red grapes give off pyrazines. Um, cab just happens to be the one that has the highest concentration of it. Tribbiano Chardonnay, IGT product of Italy. Tribbiano is an old world grape traditionally identified with Italy's classic white wines. Chardonnay, was that her? No. Which is an international grape, uh, is responsible for an oppressive array of the world's most coveted white wines. Blended together, these two combine spice and fruit, raciness and richness, savory minerality and exotic uncouthness in each bottle. Old world meets new world in a daring combination. The acid of the Tribbiano, sorry, uh, grape keeps the rip richness of the Chardonnay in check and together they show off tropical fruit characters and a crisp 
finish. The Vau du Cobri is where tradition and innovation meet. Enjoy with cream sauces, shellfish, and seafood pastas. It says, old world meets new world, and this daring combination of acid of the Triviano keeps the richness of Chardonnay in check, and together they show off tropical fruit characters and a crisp finish. Cha-cha-cha. I don't like how they ended it on the bottle. I'd much rather enjoy how they ended it on the website. So, it says the people and culture. Uh, heavy foods from this region beg for crisp, refreshing white wines to refresh the palate. So this wine was created with the purpose of that in mind. After all, wines develop their personalities by reflecting the ideas. So, haven't said this yet, be surprised that uh, day 12 is the first time I say it. What grows together goes together. So a lot of the wines you'll find that they pair with things that are also grown in that region um, or what a region is famous for. So like certain Italian wines go really well with, you know, Parmesan Reggiano cheese and Spanish wines go really well with spicy tapas and, you know, paellas. French wines go really well with pungent cheeses, all those things. They're all just kind of together and they all go together and that's just the best case scenario. So, but... Well, it's going now. Today is December 19th and we are going to open wine number... 16? Yes, day 16, which is a 2018 White, Vino Verde. Vino Verde. It's a really cute label. And so, like these unfamiliar varieties, there are many secrets to discover about this beloved Portuguese white wine. Wait, wait. Oh. Look at this mess that you made on the table here. Yeah. It's like dripping off of my glass. Well, I'm pretty sure that wasn't in the video, so I'm pretty sure I'm good. I like it. I like Vino Verde though. Good Vino Verde. Some Vino Verde just kind of tastes like lemon water. I think this tastes really good. This is really good. I like it. It's light, it's refreshing, it has a, a good amount of acidity, like I can taste the minerality of it. That was a hard word for me to say tonight. <laughs> and you haven't drank before this that I know <laughs> nope, of. No, that was my first sip. Wine! What day is it? Today is can I get Friday. Can I no! I've got this short knife thing. Today is Friday, that I might December 20th. In. But we are drinking the wine for the 19th because we did not drink wine last night. Thank you. It's supposed to be quiet, not like that. Is this Spanish? It is a it's Spanish. Got, it's got a rooster on it. It does not have the rooster on the top. Spanish though. Chardonnay. I'm sorry, I'm looking at the bits and pieces of the cork that are falling. Well, we have a solution for that. We sure do. So, so sir. We have a stainless steel filter, and all we're doing is pulling the little bits of the cork out because what else? I don't know how it looks like it's so all right. There are like three little bits in here. Mm -hmm. If you're rid of that. Mm -hmm. So, Coco Rico 2018 Chardonnay Spanish wine. The Chardonnay grape has found a new home in Spain when notes of apple, pear, and vanilla, along with a smooth finish, are the results of abundant sunshine and lengthy growing. So Chardonnay can be grown anywhere in the world that grapes are grown. It's one of the most versatile grapes uh, available. Imagine a lifelong New Yorker tired of the cold gray winters who decides to relocate to Florida. Okay. Feeling he gets when he realizes, or she realizes, that the sand between their toes, salt water lapping at the beach, and warm sun on their face are fixtures of their new life. Now picture yourself a grapevine. This is weird. I don't want to read this anymore. That's fine. Char the Coco Rico is grown in some of the best locations in Spain for Chardonnay and displays notes of apple, pear, and vanilla along with smooth finish. I just read this because it's on the back. What do you think of it? I think that it's okay. It says the first time one experiences old world Chardonnay, perhaps a fine white burgundy, 
with its oaky flavors and round texture. I don't hate this Chardonnay, but um, I don't think that this is the style that I prefer. Gil is not a big fan of Chardonnay. I just kind of want to see what it tastes like when it's a little bit warmer because it's cold. Yeah, I, wait, I chilled it tonight. I looked ahead and I was proper and I prepared and so it chilled. So <laughs> it is December 12th, 20th. 20th still and we're back on schedule. We are back on track. <laughs> and now we have a... It is a red blend from Vino Portugal. Tinto. Which vino means wine, and tinto, I'm guessing, means red. Red, mm -hmm. wow. red wine from Portugal. And the label is all messed up. It's got like a big thing in it. Fold. Dang, Olive is running on the wheel. She always likes to run on the wheel when we do this. She likes to be heard, but not seen. But at least Olive is exercising. <laughs> she, she had to chime in on that last bit. Of course she knows we're saying your name. Olive, go! Go, 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 go! Yeah, go! Go, go, go! She got really overzealous there for a second. That is a bad sign. Let me, let me show you that. The cork crumbled underneath the cork screw. It's not necessarily that bad if it's way on the edge like it was. You try that. Mm -hmm. It smells a little funny. So the smell we're trying to smell for is cardboard. cardboard. If it smells like cardboard, and I mean not like. It doesn't smell like. It doesn't smell like wet cardboard. It does just. It doesn't have much smell at all. Well, I don't know what uh, grapes are in here. Red ones, <laughs> Yeah, that's not good. That's not good. Something happened to that wine. It's really, really got a bad bite to it. It like keeps attacking my tongue. Um, when you smell, I just stuck my nose completely in it. It smells like uh, paint thinner. Like lacquer, a little bit like lacquer. And I don't smell and any- And cherries. I know. I don't. I don't smell and there's smell. like, there's zero wine on the opposite side of the cork. And like, I can squish it. That's not a good sign. Next, next comment is, uh, what can happen is there can be some gases in here and it can make it taste bad. So letting it sit out for a while and then trying just a little bit again. Is always a good idea. Mm -hmm. But the chances of us drinking this bottle, I slim. would put it less than 50% now. You win some, you lose some. Day 21 of the wine. Oh, uh, yes, 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 <laughs> yes. Day 21, we are on day 21. Tw yeah, we are back on track. We're on schedule. Finally. Uh, so today we have a French rose CR. I don't know what that means. Um, is that the, the it winery? It just says CR, yeah. 2018 Rosé Vin de France. I bet it's wine a name. Wine of France. This is a joyful wine with a whimsical personality overflowing with heady aromas of roses, lavender, and carnations. A veritable flower garden in the glass. It did. Um, so, what do we know about French Rosé? Uh, they don't just add red grape juice to it? That is correct. Uh, typically, <laughs> it is either an actual red wine that is pressed and then the skins are removed for the fermentation. Oh, that smells so good. Or it's a blend of a red wine and a white wine. Also, the best rosés from France come from the south of France which is also called the Provence. CR Rosé is grown in the wine country of Southern France in sandy soils with limestone deposits and clay. Immediately after the grapes are harvested, they are gently loaded into a state-of-the-art wine press 
state of the art. This technological marvel is programmed to only extract the perfect amount of juice from the grapes to create the wine that is extremely aromatic, perfectly fresh and fruity, and most importantly, clean and pure on the finish. So does that mean it just squishes it until it's like halfway done and then it's like, yeah, we're done, we're good. Um, It's probably just first press. The palate is all summer fruits of strawberry, peach, and gooseberry with a soft, elegant mouthfeel and gently persistent finish. Yeah, this is pretty good. So far. This is what a French rosé should taste like, mm -hmm. in my opinion. It's got a little bit of structure there. It definitely has some acid going on. But like, um, it's got enough that this probably actually could stand up to like a pork, like grilled pork dish. Like this is pretty good. I like this a lot. Today we have a Savoie from New Zealand, Marlborough, New Zealand. <laughs> we have smaller glasses today, so we can't use the whole bottle at one time. <laughs> I liked yesterday's better. This is a pucker your mouth type of sour going on here. Yeah. I mean, I don't mind it after like the second drink. No. Because the initial it, shock is over. <laughs> mm, cheers. And we're back. <sighs> Today is December 23rd. 23rd. We're back. Bordeaux red wine. Chateau Hot Fouillac, which is in the Entre de Mer, which is the right bank of Bordeaux. This is a 2018 uh, Bordeaux AOP. The back of it says a classic blend from the world's most famous wine region. Concentrated dark berry on the nose, silky smooth on the palate. Flavors show a friendly mix of cherry, cassis, and blackberry. The taste bone. I'm trying to think of a word to describe it. It tastes like tobacco, yeah. leather, and cocoa. Like mm. bitter cocoa, all in I like, one, I like, like cocoa powder. I like tobacco in, in a lot of wines, but this doesn't, there's no smoke flavor to it. There's no. You also have to remember this is a 2018. Mm. Doesn't taste very Gouda. Nothing, not even so, a smile. <laughs> the, wine, the wine is not very Gouda and the cheese is not very Gouda. I liked the white one better. Not what I would typically characterize as a right bank Bordeaux, but I was really excited about this one and I'm a little sad. Um, so today is uh, Tuesday, January 14th, and we are finally getting around to drinking day 24. 24! Of our wine <laughs> heaven calendar. It's okay. Which happens to be a uh, sparkling Prosecco from Italy. And um, the cheese that we have is a white cheddar. We have a peanut gallery um, closing in on us from the backside there. There's... It's okay, they don't see the cats. There's a couple cats. Oh shit, there she is. <clears throat> okay, so. Really glad that we're sanitary here. Uh, the Prosecco. And we're back. We traded the cats for different ones. Yes, we upgraded, I feel like. Because ours, ours are kind of like little monsters. We changed from ours to the Fosters. <laughs> so if you see a little white one and a little black one running around. That's the Foster cats. Okay, so. Um, DOC? Yeah, DOC. Denominazione de Origina Controlla. Cool. So Prosecco is from Italy. It's um, 
from a, it's a certain style, but it's also a general region. What grape is it? Galera. Galera. And then- G-L-A-R-A. You're gonna open it the proper way? Um, I was gonna let you open it the proper way because right. I'm really bad at it. So we have- Loose in the cage. We have a towel over here in case um, it don't, gets stubborn. Don't take the cage off. Grab the whole thing and twist the bottle. Just like that. Woo! <laughs> Prosecco usually has a lot more fruit than champagne does. And Prosecco typically tastes like nice, ripe fruit. Like it actually has a, a grape smell. Like it smells like grapes would smell. It also smells an awful lot like apples and pears. <clears throat> this is a pretty nice one. Prosecco is from Italy. Champagne's from France. And sparkling wine is from the United States. Or from any other region that's not. Not. Ah, uh, champagne. 